Do you want to put my phone on? Are we on? Hi! Oh, yeah. <laughs> Guess oh, what? We get to be with each Yay! other. Yay! 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 And awake. It's that. not 8 a.m. We're not just little boxes today. Yay! We're like people hugging each other. Yay! Yay! <laughs> so we're going to start with a little bit of talk among us, and then we're going to talk to everybody around here. Let's start with the Mel. Yay! Yay! I was trying, I was thinking about wearing the Did you wore. bring it? Not no. <laughs> like, oh. I'm going to walk around with your Yes. Wore. I wanted her to wear it like a t-shirt. <laughs> See, look, I wear this. Yes. You could wear it. Yes, I could. So, hi, Christina DeVetta, reporting to you from Spokane, <laughs> where the weather is lovely, and we are so excited to be together. And we're missing Michael Tino. Hi, everybody. Michael. Hi, Michael. There he is. We miss, we miss you. His daughter's birthday. Yes. yes. So, who's next? Hi, I'm Aisha. Just a, I was in Seattle, went up 40 minutes, then came down. I'm here in Spokane. So, yeah, you're all and on I'm my going time back zone. to Christina because she didn't say enough. Yes. I don't think everyone knows what I meant. So, uh, last <laughs> evening, I was super honored to receive the Mel Hoover <laughs> Award, which is given out by Drum Diverse Revolutionary Unitarian Universalist Multicultural Ministries, is what Drum stands for. And the Mel Hoover Award is given each year. Um, to folks who show outstanding leadership in multicultural ministries within Unitarian Universalism, and I was super honored to receive it, um, particularly to get it from the most recent uh, award recipients, including Clyde Grubbs, Marisol Caballero, uh, Danielle DeBona, and that just meant so much to me. So thank you, Drum. Yay! I'm still basking in the glory of your honor. Really appreciate it. So and well deserved. Yay! <laughs> so I'm wearing this dumb hat because it's, it's a great hat. It's a great hat, and it looks good on me. Uh, it is the 75th birthday of the Church of Lord Fellowship, so our imagination is this whole gathering is our birthday party. So we're serving cupcakes from here, here and there and having pop-up birthday parties, and it's really fun. There's a cowbell. And Dawn! Hi, I'm here. I'm on the Yay! West Coast. And I don't know whether it's morning or night, but the coffee here is really great. Um, and I'm... Leading worship tour. Yay! Whoa, I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah, they've nice. given me five minutes at the microphone. Oh, oh dear Lord. Here we go. <laughs> so, Hang on. Um, I've changed the words seven times already, um, and I'm trying to remove all the impolite ones. Don't but, do that. All the ones that will prevent me from ever reaching full fellowship. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, okay, okay. It's still a thing. It's, it's still, still a thing. thing. It's still a thing. Just, so, but, Hello! So I, yesterday was one of those days that I went 8 a.m. to like, I don't know, 11.30 nonstop. Mm. It was amazing. We did a workshop on collaborative leadership for collective liberation, and I did other workshops. Um, so it's been amazing. Today, the Commission on Institutional Change is going to be here, so if you're live streaming, please watch that the afternoon, and tomorrow Robin D'Angelo is going to be here, and I'll be the one interviewing her. She's not taking questions from the audience, but what? So, yeah, it's going to be, I'm looking forward to it. She's amazing. So, way. We have a little phone that we can walk around and talk to people. We can um, figure out how to add okay. it. Laura right. Sutoski, you can't see her. She's sitting behind go, I this camera. We we doing all yes, of we should start with Jason. Aisha and I are going, going to go pounce and capture. We'll we'll bring some, people. Yeah, we're going to start bringing people in to talk to them. New people, people have been here a lot. We just want to hear from people how GA is for them. And I see some interesting looking people right there. Do you want to come and be on? Come on, come on down. Down. This is always a fun show. Yes, lots we never of people know. who don't usually get to come on are in vicinity. Yes, so, and introduce here we have yourself. Long-term CLF member, step up, introduce yourself, and share what is ex what's great about GA for you. So I'm Amari Kiriotis, and I live in California. And what I love about yeah. GA oh, yeah, is I get to see all of my CLFers. We're friends on Facebook. Yeah, so. get to hug them and touch them, and they're all my family. And Amari goes out and helps people in disaster areas, so we all owe her a huge gratitude for that hard, hard work. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Enjoy. Great to have you here. Come yeah. next year. Come on up. 
we have a CLF board member, that might not be the first thing he says about himself, but it's the first, the most important thing. No. Everywhere I go, whenever I meet somebody, I say, Hi. have you heard about the CLF? I'm, I'm surprised you don't have your birthday hat on. I know, I know, went missing somewhere last night. Yeah, so, so happy to be on The View. Hi everybody, I'm Jake Morrill uh, from Oak Ridge, Tennessee, just outside Knoxville, and I love uh, the, the CLF, and... Um, that's all. And that's yeah. the only thing happening at GA for you, is loving the CLF. <laughs> What's your high point here? You guys had your you know, worship yesterday, the Christian Fellowship? The Christian Fellowship had a, uh, the communion service yesterday. And, you know, that's just a, a time where people, uh, for a lot of people who have been rejected from the table, from the welcome table, are welcomed. And so there's just a lot of tears in the room. And, um, you know, that's always powerful to be part of and to help make possible. Um, and it's also been a week of a lot of uh, conversations and listening and learning and, um, you know, hanging in there and trying to trying to see what I'm not seeing. And so, we love you for that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yay, Jake! Yay, Jake. <laughs> All right, there's somebody. Lynn, come on up. She's, she's <laughs> just you. sitting at a table. I don't know if she wanted, wanted to talk, to be your live studio here she audience. is. Here we oh, go. oh, she was our live studio there audience, but I... You don't get to be a live studio audience at GA. Why don't you introduce yourself and say what's special about GA for you? Uh, I'm the Reverend Lynn Cox. I'm an interim minister. And what's special about GA is bringing all kinds of different new people and identities and ideas together in like a, a live mix. Like usually there's a slow-mo mix of people and ideas. But at GA, it's just like a boiling pot of stuff. Wow, it's a good boil. Yeah, so I enjoy being in the government. Yeah, that's great. Well, I'm glad you're and I see that you're a CLF member. I am a CLF member. I and we give monthly because it's really important to support the CLF. Thank you. you we'll turn this into a large ad for CLF. <laughs> so here we have the one and only oh. Don Plant. He's not doing much this he's, week. He's yes, just, just, out. just a little bit. Chill over him. <laughs> Why don't you tell us what you do? Well, I'm Don Plant. I've been a meeting planner for the UUA since 2000. 2000. Wow. I just found out I'm like ninth on the list of the most senior, senior staff members at wow. the UUA. And I guess I like it here. Yeah. <laughs> Anything you want to tell people about it? Uh, well, General Assembly is very exciting for people. Uh, you know, it's the gathering of the tribe, and uh, we plan it year round. And not only do we plan this one year round, we plan multiple years year years round. So, and your your boss is leaving, and a new person. Yes, coming in. yes, yes. Changing of the guard. This is my second changing of the guard. Mm -hmm. I've been around since 2000. Barbara Prairie was the first uh, General Assembly director in my tenure, and. Uh, the Tanya Richardson, we're very excited to have her. Yeah. We're sad, you know, this is a bittersweet time for us, yeah. but uh, we're very excited to have her. Great. Well, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you for everything. You all have no idea how much this for man all was. Years. All year, but particularly these 7, 10, 12 million days of GA, like, it no sleep, ends. it never ends, and Well, this it is our pleasure. Keep it coming, folks. Yay. Thank you. Okay, here hey. we have. Hey. Come on. Why do you want your camera? All right. Here we go. All right. Hi. Just say your name and where you're from and how GA is for you. I'm Iris Chalk. I am from Muncie, Indiana, and I'm the junior worship coordinator. Yeah. Oh, all right. Yeah. Right. Yay, Indiana. Okay. And I'm the junior worship coordinator on the youth staff. And this year, um, the youth, youth worship coordinators are really focusing on centering youth spirituality and making sure that youth know that it is valid, it is important in our faith. And um, for a while, it's been neglected, and that's not okay. And so this year, this year we're lifting that up, and we're um, creating a space for youth. We've already had um, a, two wonderful spiritual practices with amazing attendance and an amazing worship, and today is Synergy, and tomorrow... I hear Synergy, the chalice is going to be lit. It's going to yes. be amazing. It's going to be lit like a chalice, yeah. Um, and lit like a chalice. Lit like a chalice. Sorry, yeah, I'm old, I'm old. <laughs> lit like a chalice. Yeah. 
Um, so that's what we're lifting up this year. And um, G because Jaya is for everyone and that you deserve a space that is important to them, that is important to their spirituality, and they feel like they matter there. And they feel like they're really proud of that. Amen to that. Yeah. Awesome. Sure. Hey, everyone. My name is Tyler. They he pronouns. I live right outside of D.C. Uh, and I work with youth and young adults, and particularly at this GA, I am uh, an adult staff person supporting youth worship. Uh, and it's been absolutely wonderful and magical and mystical to see youth create these worships that really speak to the heart of what Unitarian Universalism is. And at a time when we hear so much about people yearning for death, they're coming up with it and swiftly and quickly. And last night we had a, a closing worship for the day that I taught a bunch of people the song afterwards. And it was truly wonderful and amazing. So I want to congratulate you. Thank you. Do you remember the song? That song? The one about the, the left foot. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, what yeah. Do you got? want me to sing it? Yes. Yeah, All right. <laughs> so we sing it at the, the closing of the worship. And um, actually, the senior worship coordinator, Emma, went to a workshop and learned it, learned it there. So it's Go on your way, enjoy my friends. Go on your way, enjoy my friends. Go on your way, enjoy my friends. Let your left leg say glory and your right say amen. Yes, that was it. It was so fun. So fun. Thank you so much. Thank I'm you. so excited about Synergy. Yeah. Awesome. Yes, right. it's going to be amazing. So, I want to introduce my friend and colleague, Barbara Myers. Uh, Barbara is our a community, minister, well, a community minister at the Mission Feed Community Congregation in Fremont, California. And you do uh, a mental health ministry. Can you say a little about that? Yes. Um, I have a ministry that focuses on mental health, and I've done a number of things. Um, Accessibility work too. Yes, I work. I work with Equal Access, and I've, I've been um, a member of leader of that organization ever since it was started. Um, I helped to start the accessibility and inclusion ministry, and um, I'm, I'm now um, one of the people that helps keep it running. Um, so, and we, we deal with all different kinds of disabilities, uh, and we have a. Uh, Congregational certification program, the public aim program, and a number of con congregation centers. And is GA being good? Is you having a good time at GA? Yes, this is wonderful. I'm just really happy with our community. Great. Thanks All right. You can absolutely give my love to the folks at Mission Peak. I will. All righty. Thanks, Barbara, for, for checking in. All right. Hi! This is Cass Bunting, who's a friend and colleague who've done training together. Tell everyone who you are and where you hail from and how's your GA been? Uh, I am Cass Bunting, and I'm the Faith Development Coordinator at Edmonds GA Congregation. And my GA has been great. Yay! So, what was your favorite thing? One highlight? One highlight? I really just love the seeing all these views together and all the interaction between them, seeing people connect and like, expecting people who know each other from like different places and are like, right? what? That's true. That's true. So fun. Yay! Thank you, Cass. You're awesome. <laughs> Hi, everybody. So we have Catherine Strickland here who's going to talk to us about allies for racial equity and why she has an elephant on her shoulder. Hi there. I'm Catherine Strickland from Vancouver, Canada. And I am here as part of the Allies for Racial Equity Leadership Collective and team. And we are doing... An elephant 
in the room scavenger hunt. So the elephant in the room is white supremacy. So each of our happy, fluffy, stuffy, gorgeous elephants have a characteristic of white supremacy culture on them somewhere. And the idea is to go around GA with the clues, support from the clues, or to the um, to find all of our 15 elephants with our 15 um, white supremacy culture characteristics on them, take a selfie, bring your selfies back to us or upload them on the ARE website which is www.uuare.org and then you get to take home a little elephant with a little sweater that says, no really, white supremacy is a problem. Get one of these, you yes, get one of these, isn't he so cute, look at him. He got Aspen here from a small congregation in Texas, Aspen's first GA. Oh, Aspen, yeah. tell us. It's, it's, a, it's my first GA. I am a trans woman, and it, I am representing my congregation. I'm 19, and it's my first GA, and it's amazing to be in community with Unitarians. I was not raised Unitarian. Only been a UU a year, raised Mormon. But it's like, I don't even want, this is home, being in community, I just... I'm, and you live right on the border yes. where the campus are, right? Yeah. So tell us about the work that you're doing So I have been a part of fighting the no border, fighting with no, uh, the no border wall movement since 2018. I helped save, plan yeah. Save Santa Ana Wildlife Refuge, and I saved that with a bunch of my, com my colleagues there and, for, and organizers, and I have attended, I attended the first rally at the Ursula Detention Center when uh, Julian Castro and the, the Democratic delegation came down to the valley. So I have seen the thing as a UU, my UU are showing up to fight this injustice at the border. And it's like we could, we just want to let everyone know there is no crisis there. And we are, there are, we are civil and decent people who want to. Well, there's a crisis, but it's one yeah, put on by us. It's one put on by us, but we are not in danger. Yeah. We are, we are decent people who just want to work live, eat like the rest of us and we want and we have you use down here to, we're trying to do the work. Thank you so much and thanks for saying hi to people. And next we have the Reverend Dr. Rosemary Bray McNaff, the president of Star King. You heard about CLF's birthday, but yes. we have an older sibling here. Yes you do. <laughs> Happy birthday to Star King. We're 115 years old. <laughs> We started in 1904 in the offices of the First Unitarian Church of Oakland and then later moved to Berkeley where we are until this day. And we are happy to have our younger siblings celebrating. <laughs> We're we only love, 75. That's all. <laughs> we love CLF and many of our students participate and Mandy Goheen is a Star King graduate who is a fab fabulous addition to the work of the Our CLF. Chaplain, fabulous. She's yep. totally fabulous. Yep. So I want to say hi to everybody. Thank you for watching The View. One day I'm going to come back on when I can wake up early Rose enough wants to, to do a night view. <laughs> I want to do a night view because I'm a night person and I may yet figure out how to do that. But God bless you Meg and thank you. And happy birthday. And happy birthday to you. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Next. Thank you. We got a line over there. Okay. We got we got a clump turning into people. a line. Okay. Asia's got people. Come on, Catherine. Hi. Catherine Childs is one of our Canadian folks. This is, when we say this is an international conference, Canada oh, yeah. is a different so country. So, Catherine, yes. would you like to introduce yourself and let everyone know where you hail from and what is your favorite part of General Assembly? So, my name is Catherine. I use the pronouns they and them. I am a member of Trust and also the Director of Religious Exploration at the Unitarian Church of Montreal in Montreal, Quebec, Canada. Um, today, I am celebrating Bowtie Friday at Yay! General Assembly. Um, and so far, my favorite part was that trust members and uh, non-binary uh, folks were invited to join the POC folks for the J. Mace teaches um, on whatever day that was on. And it was amazing. And I like honestly could have gone home happy from General Assembly oh. after that. It was amazing. J. Mace is a friend of mine. So. Super cool. Yay. I'm jealous now. <laughs> What was your favorite part? Oh, that was your favorite part. That was today. my favorite part. All right, great. Um, How are you liking Spokane? Um, I got to walk around on the first day that I was here. I found the yarn shop. It was amazing. Well, there it is. There yeah. it is. And I'm so excited that Aisha is going to be the president of my association. That's happening. I'm going to be president elect of Lorena. I just got elected at GA on Wednesday. Her professional days. So, yes, I'm 
one year of shadowing uh, the current president, Linnea Houston, because Annie Scott is going to join the Western Regional staff. So she resigned. And so a year from now, I'll be on my own. They're throwing me into the deep end. So yay. Henry, we have it. Thank you, Henry. Right. Yay. Here we oh, go. that way? Okay. Come here and then, okay. Yeah, then you're next. Okay. Oh. young adult bandits, we got this. <laughs> yeah. How's it going? How many young adults are here? It's, it's, it's a pretty solid number. We we have a, a room that's supposed to seat about 50 people. I think we fill most of those seats for, for orientation, so it's definitely oh, a, a pretty large thing. Good. good. And are the young adults doing worship separate from the youth worship? Is it all together? Right? Yeah. This is my That's a great question. So the, the youth are putting on their worship last night. There's one on Saturday night. We're not doing uh, a separate like young adult worship. There was a workshop yesterday where um, some young adults were putting together a piece that ended up becoming part of the, the worship for the procession of species. So, oh, good. Yeah. Good. So, what's your favorite part of General Assembly? I think for me, it's probably uh, doing leadership development, helping other young people to do the workshops that they want to do and to learn about stuff that they want to learn about and just build community and connect people and help everybody network. Yes. That's great. Um, I'd say, I, we were just talking about this, but the, the Synergy Bridging Service was the last time I was in James four years ago, and I bridged in Portland, and it was this like, really powerful moment for me as a UU, so I am really stoked. Okay, well, I think that's going to be lit like a it's chalice. It's going to be lit like a chalice. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it correctly. So, so first I said, um, the chalice is like, oh, I heard it correctly. <laughs> <laughs> I got it right. Lit like a chalice. Yeah, I, love okay. I love that. Thank you. Thanks so much for so, being here. So can I say something? Yeah, so um, if anyone this wants an opportunity to come work, on staff, the volunteer positions, uh, pay for okay. registration, housing, food, um, all that good stuff. So if you want to come to okay. GA and you want an opportunity to do youth or young adult work, there are lots of positions open up throughout the year if you'd be able to do that. Um, I'm a co-facilitator. Um, they'll be posted on the UUA website and probably on Bluebell. So co-facilitator positions, two years, and then we have yearly positions like Emerson. Yeah, I'm one of our spiritual support staff this year, so we've got a couple of different positions. Hello! Hi! <laughs> I'm with Henry from Portsmouth, New Hampshire. Uh, tell us who you are, where you hail from, and what is Meaning Makers? Uh, my name's Henry. I use he, him, his pronouns. And um, Meaning Makers is a, it's hard to describe, but it's an emergent young adult um, kind of identity group, but we also go on retreats. It's feels like a summer camp at times, <laughs> but it's like four or five day retreats mixed with small group ministry throughout the uh, year. And it's a, I want to say roughly a year program where you receive uh, mentorship and um, build skills to be able to make community or spiritual practices um, in your larger community, but you started out within that smaller um, group that or what we call them like cohorts in those smaller group ministries. And who did you intern with before you entered Meaning Makers? <laughs> I entered with I internship uh, I interned with uh, Kirsten Hunter, but that was actually for summer seminary. For summer seminary, who's the religious educator in Portsmouth, New Hampshire? Shout out! <laughs> That's excellent. And what's your favorite part of GA in Spokane? So far, I just like talking theology with a lot of young adults. Um, there aren't many of us in my congregation, so it's nice to be part of a larger community and talk about the future of Unitarian Universalism. Excellent! Thank you so much, Henry! Yay! All right, we've got a team here. We've got a fabulous team from UUA staff. Tell us who you are, where you are, and what you do, and what you do at GA. I am Shannon Harper. I am uh, the Youth and Young Adult Specialist for the Central East Region. And I'm Jennifer Davis Hawkins. I am in Salt Lake City, and I work for the um, Lifespan Faith Engagement Group, and I'm Youth Ministry Associate. All right. And together, we are the co-conveners of the Youth Ministry Roundtable. Tell, tell us about it. Ooh. Well, okay, so the Youth Ministry Roundtable is a collaborative uh, staff group of UUA employees who have youth ministry in their portfolios and they're working alongside youth and religious educators and ministers to... Oh, and here's and a member And there's Sarah now. Green, who's also a member of the Youth Ministry Roundtable. 
<laughs> That's what we love about GA. People walk by. Sarah, you can stay here if you want. Be interviewed with these two. Sure. Okay. All right. So now it's a three-person team sharing the YouTube stream. Move up a little bit for the sound to be good, and then just share whatever you want to share about it. So we we recently received a very important charge to look at creating a strategic plan to uh, create a vision for youth ministry at the UUA. Yeah, and we're, we're just beginning that process, so that means that it's starting to be time to gather youth together, religious professionals together, and uh, lay people who are really dedicated to youth ministry together to see what is working well, what their hopes and dreams are, and how we can support bringing those into action. I just wanted to say how great Jenica and Shannon have been leading us to this point and 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 through this point. Um, I I trust both of them so much, and that feels like uh, trust is the gold currency. It's the gold currency, and the it's UUA so has not always been trustworthy, says the former youth director. Exactly. So it's nice to have people who. Um, hold the history and, and and the vision in their bones and in their bellies. Um, so in the fall, you know, when yes. we're back on, we'd love to have a whole show about this. Uh, we would yeah. love that would be love great to, to, to talk more about it. Yes, we'd love to have a talk. We're all about the youth. It's like, we're not a religion without the youth. We're not a religion with, we don't care about youth, that's not a religion. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Thanks, thanks so much. Christina. Yes. Everett. Hey, y'all. Look who I found. Everett. Hey. Fresh from the plenary floor. Yes. Right. Yeah. So, Everett, tell us who you are and maybe tell us a little bit about the um, public witness yesterday. Sure. So, my name is Everett Thompson. I am your Solid Love campaign manager. I am a Southern by birth and by choice, uh, and I'm just grateful to be here and to play with these great folks. Uh, hey, Cupcake. And, uh, <laughs> Hi. 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 and this guy here yes. is... Michael Crumpler, LGBTQ and Intercultural Programs Manager, and a member of the Organizing Strategy Team for uh, LGBTQ. And they're, they're both former justice. guests on The View. Yes. Exactly. Yes. It's great to be here. GA is like lit, honey. <laughs> and, um... Yeah, the, the LGBTQ gathering space is always full. We had an amazing showing for the Marsha P. Johnson, Pay It No Mind, uh, Stonewall movie night and talk back. Someone who actually knew Marsha P. was there. Wow. And someone who's new to Unitarian Universalism as a, as a trans person uh, was there in tears and just talking about their experience. And, uh, and youth were there, or a quarter of the room were youth. Uh -huh. Oh, and and talking about how important this is, and so it was just right a really, on. really, really, really good night. And tonight is the queer people of color Kiki. This is the Kiki. So hey. meet in the double hey. tree tonight. That's right. And we're just gonna like uh, you know turn the to town. Right. Okay, wait, I gotta ask. Did you talk to each other about your glasses? We did not. I noticed it today, <laughs> I know. and like I was like a mix of like shade and like. <laughs> <laughs> so oh my god, it's so perfect. I was like. Oh my god. I wanted to be like the other day, girls. Girls, I was like, if I'm gonna shave and I'm gonna put on the glasses, also known as I couldn't find my other pants. Yeah. <laughs> my backup pair looks like this. Yeah, <laughs> but we did all right. Yeah, we did all right. We did all right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Love you all. Love this is fantastic. Every time. Bye, cupcake. Bye. Bye. I can't wait for the kiki tonight. Yes. Yes. Um, about the public witness to, that happened yesterday because it was really awesome. Well, the beautiful thing about the public witness is that we actually did get a response. You know, really? Yes. Right on. So the Spokane County Commissioners sent out a statement. Um, just to give you all a little bit of context, um, so we're here in Spokane, and Spokane they're trying to build a new jail. We're saying no new jail. Right. We're in alignment with the uh, Spokane community, particularly uh, brown and black led organizations who've been right. fighting back for the past 10 years mm -hmm. uh, not to actually um, expand the jail. Right. Um, there's hyper mass incarceration here in Spokane and probably in other places where we are. 
uh, they have a strategy and a plan that has real smart solutions, saying that we don't need jail cells, we need schools, not cells. That's right. We need services, not sentences. We yep. need jobs, and not jails. That's right. And so yesterday, what we were able to do were, um, it was a thousand folks um, that actually gathered um, at the Red Wagon, which is an iconic area here in Spokane, and we actually made our demand saying, no new jail. We had a great media presence. And what I want to say, wherever you are in UU land or not, there's something beautiful about the power of we, but also the power of bringing folks together and to demonstrate what we can do collectively. That's right. And so now, the Spokane folks said, the Spokane County Commissioner saying, we're studying this. We're not going to do that yet. Okay. No, just give us some more time. And so for us, that is a win. We said, we're putting the heat on you. And we will not end. We will keep looking at you. We will continue to say, not in our name. And we will continue to say, free the folks, free the land, free our people. And that people deserve dignity wherever they are. That's so right. thank y'all. Love, 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 and grace. And keep starting with love. Thank you so thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Since you're always gone, we have the Latino. You know. I, yeah. I know, right? <laughs> so, so the view world should know that somehow this year, every single time we've had a Latino or Latina, Latinx guest, I have not been able to be there. And I just want my people to know I love you. <laughs> it was not on purpose. <laughs> so today we have. Elias, tell us who you are and the exciting news that you have. It's so, still news to us. Sure. Yes. Elias Ortega, and I am the incoming president of Bimbo Lombard. I will be starting on July 8th. This is my first year, yes. sort of in the process of starting to with the folks and the alums in, in a different capacity. Yeah. So I'm really excited. Yes. We're talking about the opportunities to do shared ministry in some locations. And, you know, I'm looking forward to it. Well, Elias has also served on the Commission for Institutional Change, and that has been a huge, huge undertaking for the past two years. Two years. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about how that's gone. Well, as you can imagine, there's a, a lot of challenges, and I would say also possibilities. Yes. So I would say that the biggest challenge perhaps that we have faced uh, is to communicate to people that we need to really engage the conversation of white supremacy culture right. and stay at the table. Right. Stay at the table. Um, and it's been really challenging to uh, help folks understand that this is not just a personal issue, mm -hmm. um, that it is an institutional one as well. Right, that the conversation that we need to be having is not about whether or not individually I am a racist, mm -hmm. but it's about how the system that we have created, that we live into, and that we worship perpetually as a white supremacy culture right. has been damaging, not only for folks of color, but also to a larger population as well as white folks. Yeah, for, it's damaging for everybody. I think that's what people sometimes miss in the mix, is that it doesn't just hurt P POC. Like, this is, this is, the way this is built is damaging to everyone. Yeah. And the environment. And then, yeah. Absolutely. So we really appreciate that. And I just have to say, as a religious educator, it is so, so um, affirming that you, as a non ordained clergy person, are taking the helm of one of our seminaries. It means a lot to us. And man, we're just really, really excited to see you there. I think it's about embracing the priesthood of all believers. That's right. Whatever role we are as lay leaders or lay leaders or educators, we have a role to play. That's right. You can give it out to our That's folks. Right. That, um, Thank wait, you. Thanks for being, Thanks for being here. here. And we're going to hear more from you as you start your role at Star at uh, Meadville. Give it to yeah. everyone. Thank you. <laughs> all right. Who do we have? We Okay. All right. Thank you. We've got Bart Frost coming in. Bart Frost. How's yeah, everyone our, doing? Our beloved Look at Bart. Look at we got Bart. Bart. We're here in Spokane, Washington. Yes, we are. Yeah. What's up, Meg? I you know, we're just talking to people about General Assembly. That must be bittersweet for you. You're so divided between love. 
Yeah. Like for New Orleans? Really bad. Yep. So this will be my last GA as director of Youth and Young Adult Ministries. Although I probably won't be going far. Um, you know me, lifelong. I've already served 18 years. I need seven more to get that gold watch, gold right? Watch, yeah. So I have to stick around at least for that. But yeah, we're going to be moving to back to New Orleans the end of July. Um, and really hope to get involved back with the local congregations there. They're doing wonderful racial justice work in their communities, and my wife and I are really excited to do that. And you used to live there? Yes, I served as uh, their DRE for a few years before getting this position at the UUA as director of the New Middle Ministries. Interesting. And how long did you do that position? Uh, <laughs> about four and a half years, a little bit over. Yeah, started in September of 2014. So I just have to let folks know that this is um, the last director of youth and young adult ministry. So for now, for now, that position has been eliminated, and um, the office of youth and young adult has been eliminated and restructured into um, a new department at the UA. No, okay. We met and we met the people at the round table. Yeah. yeah. But as a former youth director, I think there's nothing like right. having we'll a person with the portfolio and that's your only portfolio. Yeah. So I would say you see among the view staff some concern about this group. I think so and I think what I really have valued so much about you, Bart, is that you have ensured that youth have a voice at the table whenever humanly possible. And I have real concerns that that isn't happening in this restructuring. Um, I, I think that, you know, it's really easy to open up and be expansive and when we're thinking about um, how we serve youth and young adults. And I don't think that it's outside the realm of possibility to talk to them about how we want to see that happen. So I really just have to give it up for you and say thank you so much for really um, having carried that uh, for so long. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. I think that also goes a little bit to what Susan said on the stage during her president's report. You know, nothing about us without us. Right. Um, and that's that's generally been a philosophy of ours in the Youth and Young Adult Ministry Office. Uh, and, you know, definitely all of us, most of us, were our, at least formative UUs. UUs that found the faith before the age of 25. Uh, and I, that, that changes your relationship to the faith and changes our passion as well. And so that's something we've really been grounded in, is lifting up the voices of young and young adults and making sure that there's space for them. And I'm, I'm also glad to, you know, be in a long line of wonderful leaders like Meg, who served as youth director back in the day. 1989 you to know, 1992, yeah. Jory. Um, Tandy Rogers, Jesse Jager, even Carrie McDonald, our EVP, served as uh, Youth and Young Adult Ministry Director. And then all the young adult sides of things, too. Michael Tino Actually, and Joseph Santos. There, there was line. a separate young adult, so there was a youth director, young adult director, and three youth. Um, uh, so it was yeah. a robust office. Yeah. I always joke with, or used to joke with our coming of age folks uh, because. You know, I was a DRE's kid. I swore I would never be a religious educator. And I always tell them, if you go back in time and you found 15-year-old Bart and you were like, hey, guess what? You're going to be a religious educator and you're going to work for the Youth and Young Adult Ministries office. I'd say, wait a second. Youth and Young Adult Ministries? They should be separate. But then the other part of that is, I will never follow in my mom's footsteps. And look at me now. There you a go. religious educator surrounded by awesome religious educators as well. Once Thank you right. Thank you so much for your service. You. All y'all CL CLF folks, take care. I hope you're enjoying the live streams. Make sure to, to tune in for Synergy at 430. Yes. It's going to be, as the kids say, lit like a chalice. Woo! So we'll see you. You'll see us. We won't be able to see you, but you'll be with us in spirit. Right. All right. Hey, hey, it's Kiana Perkins. Please tell us your amazingness and who you are and where you are. That's a lot. So, it's a lot. <laughs> so first of all, you have to understand I'm standing here with somebody who... Uh, <laughs> so, I'm, and then there's all these people y'all can't see who are amazing and who like... You're amazing. I'm going to take that compliment, but I'm, can I give one to you? Okay. All right, thank you. <laughs> so I'm just looking around at all these amazing people and it's just, I'm overwhelmed. But I want to say, so who am I? Um, I'm a follower of the VU, 
all the time. Every the time. Boo. Boo. I like <laughs> it. <laughs> that's how we need that's to be. Because I just because that's, that's I just see it in yes. print, so I just guess on the. Yes. But so I watch on Thursdays. Um, but what I do um, professionally, I work at First Unitarian Universalist Congregation of Ann Arbor, um, and I am the social justice pastoral care coordinator. Whoop, whoop. So I do a whole bunch of stuff about people and community and relationship. Um, and personally, I get to worship with Blue, which is Black Lives Unitarian whoop. Universalism. Whoop. Um, and I have been able to spend a lot of time working with drum and developing what looks like multicultural faith space for folks in Ann Arbor and Metro Detroit, whether that be a drum group, whether that be a blue cohort, just putting that out in the atmosphere that we are continually working to bring, um, as my friend uh, Dr. Glenn Thomas would say, all the shades of the earth um, <laughs> together uh, in ways that are meaningful and that are sustaining and not just uh, show up. like. Uh, it's great that uh, God loves everybody and doesn't see color, but we also uh, need to move past that stage of uh, multiculturalism and multiculturalism res representation. And this is your first GA? This is my first and GA. And what do you think? Um, Woo! Oh man, there is so much going on, but at the same time, there's so much to take away. Um, this morning I wrote a little piece. If you, if you look up an event called Kiana Goes to GA, um, you can follow me and watch my videos and yes, stuff. It's been great. But the thing I was reflecting on this morning is like, what makes it sustainable? Like, I can't just be in this convention center for four to five days because that's unhealthy. So I'm gonna try to go on a gondola ride. Nice. I'm gonna go celebrate. Yeah, I'm gonna go celebrate Leslie Mack tonight. And so there's all these opportunities to have work-life balance because as much as we love you all, we have to take care of ourselves. And that is the thing I learned yesterday, uh, pretty pretty swiftly. So take care of yourself. Drink a lot of water, talk to people, only do things that feel good. I said that like three days ago and I did not listen. So oh. <laughs> that's what I think about GA. Yay. Do what feels good and this yes, felt good. Thank you. And these like like get in here, get like do you guys come on. Like, come these on. people. So are you do you not understand? <laughs> okay. I have to run and go do some other good stuff. Yes. But you were doing a little something. You're a little busy. Babies in March. and bailouts, yeah, a little something, something. something. Babies and bailouts is our way of <laughs> saying we're gonna help everybody no matter how you're in that pipe stream of school to prison, wherever you are, if you're a child mm -hmm. who's impacted by incarceration. That's right. Or if you are a person who's experienced incarceration. So babies and bailouts, we freed what like ninety plus women. Woo! Folks are still asking, folks are still giving money. There is no bailout season, so if you still want to give, click a link, find a way. You can get people free today. You don't have to wait till Mother's Day. That's right. Bitly slash blue BB donations. It'll always get you there. Blue get there. -B -B get there, get there. Here there. you go. Thank you all and have a great day. Bye. So today we also want to celebrate our youth Woo! at GA. GA Youth. Yes. This is, introduce yourself. I'm the junior youth dean for GAU. I'm Carrie, I'm the senior youth dean for GAU. So, GA youth, I'm confused. Hmm, that sounds a little different. Yeah, so uh, it used to be called the Youth Caucus, but we changed it, so it's just about all of the youth at General Assembly, and the Youth Caucus is specifically for um, people who are participating in business, so that includes youth delegates and anybody who is a youth and who is in the general session hall during gen session time. Yeah, done. So what, what's GA been like for the youth so far? What, give, give me some highlights, tell me. Um, highlights, our coming team process actually worked, which was like really good because we got to base it on our one from 2018 and then build on that with little discussions that we had. Um, business is kind of frustrating because people just want to let things be, but that's how things be. Yeah, and we're having fun with our bingo cards, so we're enjoying that. Um, also a really big highlight has been the spiritual practices. Our worship coordinators are not only putting on two wonderful worships for us and, and also synergy, but also providing spiritual resources for youth through um, our General Assembly every day. So we've had two of those so far, another one today, and we're really looking forward to it. So tell us a little bit about synergy, because we've heard that Bart mentioned synergy earlier for people to take a look at. You just mentioned synergy. What, 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 what? what? Yeah, it's an open service where youth make the transition from uh, youth to being an emerging adult or an adult. And um, they walk across the stage, say their name after a uh, service. Yeah, um, I'm really excited. I'm I'm a senior, so I'm bridging at, today at Synergy, and it will be my 
fourth and final time bridging this year after my church and different youth events, so I'm excited to make that transition and join YA at GA. Woohoo! Anything else that youth shouldn't miss at GA? Dance. Yeah. Also, today's World Giraffe Day, uh, and I like giraffes, so I'm just kind of celebrating that too. So, see the youth at the dance because really the highlight for every GA is all the multi generational getting out there and doing the electric slide together. Youth of Color lunch, 15 minutes, be there. At Chili's. Chili's, all right. Youth of Color, be there. Thanks, y'all. So, I'm going to bring on Brian. Jess this is Brian Jessup. Um, and I can't remember what training we were in years ago, but I haven't seen him for a long time. And he's just retiring in nine more days. Ryan, what's it like to be here? Well, it is wonderful to be in Spokane, uh, in this beautiful land. It was the homeland of the Spokane Indian and the Salish folk. And now here we are. Much of the beauty still remains. And we feel very responsible with this General Assembly and well we should to become part of the people who turn our country around in terms of the way we, we live and our effect on the environment. That is, uh, I think, number one on all of our lists and then how we survive as spiritual people in the midst of that tremendous uh, challenge because we Unitarian Universalists don't believe in original sin but we are certainly held by original complexity, shadow and light in each of us. Complicity. And, yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah, inevitably. Inevitably. I mean, those of us who are here are privileged enough, and this is one of the challenges of General Assembly, is how to get people here, so it's a good thing we can do it uh, via uh, little broadcast like this, so folks who don't have the financial means can get here, because it is still, it's a, it's a privilege to be able to Thank you so much. What are you planning to do after you're not uh, in the pulpit? In the, in the, well, the, when ministers retire, the, the question is, what form will the next ministry okay. take? Okay. And I'm hoping to do actually some deeper spiritual development because, as a parish pastor, uh, there's just a whole lot of work to do, and I haven't had as much meditation time and retreat time as I would like. So. I, grow my soul and then see where it leads me. That's great. Well, Meg, thank your you soul for, is already quite big, so thanks <laughs> thank you. for all thank your Thank you years. For, yeah. for asking me to, to share. Thank you. So Don Fortune and I, this being GA, we're going to run to our next thing, but asia has got a guest here. The show is going to go on, but Don and I are like... Are you leaving? Love you, Meg Riley. This is the director of Skinner House Books, Mary Bernard. One more, not two. Mary, how are you? How has your GA been? Is this your first time in Spokane? Yes. And tell us about it. Yeah. Spokane is beautiful. There's this gorgeous park right next to the convention center, which is a delight. What's your favorite part of GA? I think my favorite part of GA is that, you know, at headquarters we release the books out into the UU world and we don't get to talk directly to the people who are receiving them and reading them. So I love actually connecting directly with our readers and I love meeting with people who have input and feedback for us. Oh, nice. And we get lots of great new book ideas and I meet with people who are excited to submit proposals and it gets us all queued up for the next year for acquisitions. Go to the bookstore. Go to the bookstore. I Buy bought several books. books already. And the pocket guide, yes. best ever, and I'm not just saying it because I'm in it, <laughs> best pocket guide ever. So, how's it selling? Are people, is it going like hotcakes? Well, I have to check. Oh. I hope so. <laughs> I hope so too. Well, thank you so much, Mary. You. Good to see you. So, uh, I hear Megan Dawn left. So, yeah. what's happening? Um, we got, we, we, we're, oh, we got, we got drum. We got Emma. We're just, we're, we're on live. live. We're, just, we're live. We're riffing. Ooh. We're riffing. We're riffing. <laughs> I saw Ramo from across the room and I said, come, come. It is the lipstick. I'm a day early for the blue lipstick, but I still have to do it. <laughs> Got to do it. So what I really wanted Ramo to come and talk about was this fantastic news that we heard at the DRUM annual meeting last night. DRUM, Diverse Revolutionary Unitarian Universalist Multicultural Ministries, that we heard last night. And so you all are probably hearing it for the first time, exclusive here on The View. Dun, dun, dun. Hello! Yes, hi. So I'm Renwa. I am no longer the president of DRUM. That title is now Sana Saeed. Yes! Uh, 
Yeah. Um, but I'm really excited to share that we had yesterday morning, bright and early, signed, finally codified our memorandum of understanding with the UUA, which Woo! yes, which was developed over months of conversation and understanding that there needs to be a relationship rebuilt because yes. of the harm that had been caused yes. um, with the fracturing of our relationship and the defunding of Trump, and so really engaging in that dialogue with Harry McDonald and Susan Frederick Gray very intentionally about what Trump needs and how Trump can support the UUA and how the UUA can support us. And so um, it comes with this mutual understanding of how we're going to be in relationship moving forward, how the UUA is committed to supporting us with staff, with, uh, with opportunities for support for programming, and with funds. Um, and that's actually carrying through to the next presidency. So, yes. um, Five really years! Five yeah, year guarantee! Yeah, yeah. Woo! Very excited and I'm just so happy that Drum went out there, asked for what it needed, asked for what it deserved, and worked until they got it. You all are rock stars. Yeah. Rock stars. Yes, thank you. rock well, stars. So are you are too, because y'all are Drum. So thank you. Thank so you. let's close out the view. Yes, closing out the thank view. You. Thank you. Come on, Lori Stone-Sartoski. Yes. Okay, never come, mind. Come, 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 come Just for a quick hello. Come yes. from behind the So we'll see you in September. See you in September. Have a wonderful summer. Yeah. We love you. We love you. Woo!